good morning happy sunday to you and uh hope you've had a great weekend so far it's beautiful out. the birds are out the feeder some questions um about my level of education where did I get it let's see uh, part of my education is hands-on about my first car when I was 15 years old my uh, foster father didn't want me to do it but I did it anyway I went down the road and paid $300 for a 1986 Pontiac Firebird and I literally rolled it down the hill to my house it was one street straight to my house and there was one left turn and where it stopped was right in front of my house over the next year, I would rip apart the motor, pull the transmission, you know, just go through the car in general, pull seats and stuff out of it, fix anything I could possibly fix. Learned a lot about that car. My next vehicle after that was a uh, Bronco 2. <laughs> Learned a lot about that car. Learned how to drive stick shift in that car by myself. Actually, burned up the clutch in that thing. So at 17 years old, I was pulling the transmission to replace the clutch and over the years I would acquire many vehicles and get to the point where um, I kind of figured out what I wanted to do but I didn't know how I was going to approach it kind of thing and eventually decided that I wanted to go off to the military I went off to the military and then when I got out of the military I figured uh, after many jobs and stuff like that, never as a professional technician, that I would come back and use my GI Bill to continue my education. But even in the military, I was uh, in the motor, motor pool in Iraq doing our, own, our work because the mechanics were, they were too busy and they didn't seem like they were very good. And I did better work than they did. So my platoon leader, squad leader, would allow me to do the work myself. I was jumping in the engine bay and fixing hoses that were leaking, replacing gaskets and stuff like that, and doing just a little small work uh, to moderate work myself. It's not even my job, but I was good at it. So throughout the military, I would do that kind of stuff too. And then while I was in the military, I, caught, I actually uh, started my own little side business where I would work on only soldiers' cars because I knew they would pay <laughs> immediately. Uh, they wanted their stuff right. Uh, so I would work on only soldiers' cars and I'd bring the cars to my house, sometimes two at a time over the weekend, and just do nothing but sometimes kind of crazy work and really easy maintenance stuff that they didn't want to take to anybody else. And after I got out of the military, I used my GI Bill to, to go to school. And I ended up uh, picking Universal, Universal Technical Institute because my father is a financial director there, and he knew how to get me in quick Get all the paperwork situated because he'd been doing it longer than any director that they had so uh, i chose to sign up for the automotive program which was like i don't know 13 14 months or something like that i don't really remember exact time frame and then the diesel program which was i think about 10 to 12 months maybe a little bit more somewhere in there and then i added added international itep where you actually go through the full-blown blow, international training on semi-trucks. Um, you know, that was like a three-month program, three three to six-month program, I forget. And then I added Ford Fact, the Ford Accelerated Credential Training. So you leave with tons of certifications, and you sit down every day working and, spe and trying to learn how to specialize in Ford products. And then I went to automotive school. Um, I actually went down to Arkansas and went to automotive school and learned body repair for 14 months. Uh, ended up getting a certificate leaving that and then once I left that I went to refrigeration school. Um, just three month classes just to get certified as a refrigeration guy and then I went back to the college where I went to automotive and ended up getting a separate automotive refrigeration certification license and uh, 
then throughout the last like six or seven years all Ford has been doing is sending me to school constantly transmission school engine school advanced ele uh, electrical diagnostics uh, noise harshness vibration school and stuff like that so it's it was even the dealer down in Louisiana in one year sent me to like nine different schools so it's constant go 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 so you're always so I've got like an accumulation total of something close to like seven years of school and 440 something certifications out of everything and there's still more schools and there's still more stuff to learn it doesn't quit so uh, and, I, and I, I absolutely love what I do I, I won't deny that I just don't like the manufacturer warranty part of what I do it's it's like highway highway robbery I mean they don't pay us what we should be getting paid the customers get footed with the bill that's the bad part you know the sad part is on a Duramax uh, cylinder head you know I, I did it and I got paid uh, it's like 37 hours per customer 37 to 40 hours something like that customer because I pulled both heads and then I had to get the glow plugs machined and have everything put back together or put everything back together but then um, you look at what the manufacturer wants to pay they want to pay 20 hours for a 40 hour job they, they rob us blind um, and then just the different places I've worked at, uh, Peterbilt International, uh, I worked privately for a guy for a few years living out of his home, doing nothing but restoring 58 to 66 Thunderbirds, um, three deuce Cadillacs, Oldsmobile Starfires, he has a bunch of boats, I had to stay and live at his property, restored these cars, and, uh, he paid me to live at his home which was a church turned into a home with two big giant bays and you know a parts account and multiple vehicles i could drive and i lived at his home and restored his cars and then uh moved on from there i went to um that was right after that i went to school and i worked for international right out of school peterbilt after them um chevy after them a body shop for a year and a half doing nothing but fiberglass repair and stuff on boats and then uh, back into the industry with uh, the heavy duty stuff so like a lot of excavating equipment uh, farm drainage equipment stuff like that using working at a uh, business that had nothing but dump trucks that would haul dirt out of new building sites and stuff like that that had like earth moving equipment dirt separators and stuff like that um, worked there for a while and then went to work for a bus company on all of the buses with the multiplexing systems and stuff like that so anywhere from uh, Bluebird to International to the, some of Ford stuff propane injection um, a lot of experience there and then eventually I uh, worked for a fleet company for Hertz on diesel stuff I did nothing but work on their diesel buses and that was that was a really good job unfortunately they were getting rid of the diesel department because the diesel department wasn't going to be needed anymore because they were going to electric trams so the buses wouldn't be needed to pick up people from the airport and take them to the rental car place because they were just going to do like a like a, tr a track um, a train track from where the people would get off the airplanes and take it across the road on like a big track bridge and drop them off over at a multi-level car rental facility so they can go to any Hertz enterprise whoever but now I've recently found out that Hertz went bankrupt and they're trying to look for private investors or they're looking for people to buy or something now because of COVID um but I did that for three years and uh now I'm then I, then I went down to Louisiana and worked for a Ford dealer didn't work out they were kind of shady I went to another Ford dealer in Louisiana worked for them for a while they were better but still kind of shady then I came back up here to Illinois and worked for International for a little over a year uh, transmission driveline guy lots of transmissions clutches kingpins driveline stuff heavy stuff heavy heavy stuff and now I'm back working for Ford again um, 
making better money now, surprisingly, than I ever have in the best company I've worked for so far is uh, where I work now. They really take care of us. So I love what I do. Plenty of experience. That's my education, guys. I hope that answers your questions for people that have recently asked about education level and where I come from. That's where I come from. That's why I love what I do so much. I really, really love this field and all aspects of it. Thanks, guys. Be blessed. Have a great weekend.